Welcome to Crash Magic. In this video we're going to look at another really great card trick that's really easy to perform and the nice thing about this one is the magician has their back turn for most of the trick while the spectator is choosing and losing and shuffling and cutting the cards. As soon as we've done the performance of how it can look I will do a full tutorial showing exactly how you can perform this trick. So right from the very start in this trick the magician would turn their back so that they couldn't see and they would ask their spectator to take the cards, inspect them, check it was a normal pack and to shuffle the cards as much as they liked and then the magician would ask the spectator to also give the cards a cut. Still with their back turn the magician would ask the spectator then to deal cards into two piles now they'd, they'd ask them to deal them into two equal piles, so an equal amount of cards in each pile, somewhere between maybe 10 or 20 in each pile. So let's say our spectator in this scenario he deals 14 cards into each pile. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14 and then the magician would tell the spectator that they could get rid of the rest of the cards that we don't need those at all. The magician would then ask the spectator to choose a card, any card, from either pile and to put it face down in front of them. So let's say our spectator picks this card, in this case the King of Hearts, and then the magician would ask the spectator to collect the cards, the rest of the cards from the two piles, again give them a shuffle and then the magician would ask the spectator to deal cards down from the pile down onto the table and they're going to be dealt alternately face down face up so they'd ask them to deal the first card face down, next one face up, face down, face up, face down, face up, all the way through the cards. The magician would probably also tell the spectator to not deal them loud like this so that the spectator can count the cards but it doesn't really matter. So once the spectator tells the magician that they've done that they would then ask them to take those cards, place them on top of their selected card making sure that they've remembered it, King of Hearts, and to give those cards a cut. They would then ask them to flip the pack over, cut the cards and complete the cut again. And then they would say to the spectator that they could cut the cards again if they wanted. Or they could flip the cards again if they wanted. Or cut the cards, flip the cards as many times as they wanted. Flip the cards without cutting, cut the cards without flipping as many times as they like. Once they're happy, they would then let the magician know and it was would be at this point that the magician would turn around and this would be the first time that the magician would see these cards. So they wouldn't have seen the shuffle at the start, they wouldn't have seen how many cards were dealt into each pile, they wouldn't have of course seen which uh, card the spectator chose or where it was put into the pack. They would obviously have no clue where in this pile of cards it was and they would also have no clue whether it was face up or face down. So the magician at this point would explain that they were going to try and find the card and the only clue that they really needed was to know how many cards were in this pile. So they would count the cards but instead of counting them on the table so that they could see all the face up cards they would count them underneath the table or behind their back. So the magician at this point would count the cards 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27 and 28. So the magician would ask the spectator to confirm that indeed they had originally dealt 14 cards into each pile so there was 28 cards here. 
So the magician would then just reiterate the fact they had not seen the cards at the start, they hadn't seen the shuffle, they hadn't seen the deal into two poles or which card they'd picked, they hadn't seen when they dealt cards face up and face down, or where they'd placed the card, or how many times they'd cut or flipped the pack, so that they could have no idea whether the card was face up or face down amongst the rest of the cards. But then the magician would reveal that now every card was face up apart from one. Just one card was face down, hopefully the spectator's card, the king of hearts. Well I hope you enjoyed that card trick and let's get into the tutorial. Good news is absolutely no setup involved at all again and no sleight of hand needed so it's really easy to perform. So as I say right from the start the magician can turn their back so they don't see any of what goes on at the start. Of course because of that you've got to be quite clear with your instructions to your spectator and the first thing that you can ask them to do is shuffle the cards and cut the cards to their heart's content because there really is no setup involved. So once they've done that you then ask them as in the performance to deal cards into two piles. There's got to be an equal number of cards in each pile and some any number somewhere from 10 to 20 works well. Let's do 10 this time just to make the count a little bit shorter. So let's say our spectator deals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 and then as in the performance again we can get rid of the rest of the cards we don't need those so then you ask your spectator to select any card from either pile really is of course a free choice let's say they just choose this one six of spades and ask them to put that face down in front of themselves so we'll place that there you then ask the spectator to take the cards that are left in the two piles and they can mix or shuffle those cards as much as they like and then you ask, you ask them to deal those cards onto the table face down and face up so you ask them to deal the first one face down next one face up next one face down next one face up and ask them to continue doing that all the way through to the end of the cards once they've done that, you ask them to take that bunch of cards and put them on top of their chosen card, which if you remember was the six of spades, and to cut the cards so that their chosen card is now somewhere in the middle. Now at this point, you can ask them to flip the cards and cut the cards as many times as they want. They can cut, as many times as they want. They can of course flip the cards as many times as they want and once they're flipped they can again cut the cards as many times as they want. This is a really nice part of the trick I think that the spectator feels that the cards are getting really well mixed and that their chosen card is absolutely lost. So it's at this point that the magician turns round and they are of course faced with a pile of cards some face up, some face down, and with the selected card somewhere amongst those cards. And of course the magician has no idea where, and they have no idea whether that card is face up or face down. But there's just one thing they need to do to be able to uh, work out what the card is, and that is to count the cards. And that they're gonna do it under the table, so that they, and the excuse for doing it under the table is that they don't want to see all the face up cards that there are. But there is, as you might have guessed, another reason why they're doing this count under the table. So you truly do count the cards under the table. But you count the first one between your finger and thumb. The next one between the next two fingers. And you can continue counting like that. So you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And in doing this, you can probably see what's happening is where the spectator shuffle, uh, dealt the cards face up and face down. What we're effectively doing now is splitting those face up and face down cards. So all the face down cards are now 
here between these two fingers and all the face up cards are here between our thumb and finger here. You can see there is one face down card there and that will almost certainly be their card, the six of spades. So once you've counted the cards, still under the table, all you need to do is flip one of the halves, either, it doesn't matter. So I'd normally flip the top half and put it on top, bring all the cards out from under the table and again, normally, I would then make sure that we've got a face-up card here. So as far as the spectator is concerned, all we've done is counted the cards. But of course, what we've really done is flipped the cards. So now every card is facing the same way, apart from one card, their card, the six of spades in this case. Well, that's the end of the video. If you liked it, please like it and subscribe. If you've got any comments, leave them down below and see you soon.